Australian Aborigines have their share of critics who worry about the amount of money that governments are making available to them. Well, here's an Aboriginal success story. It involves a government-funded project that looked like it was doomed to failure, but now has the potential to be a big money spinner for Australia overseas. Peter Wilkinson reports from Waluna in Western Australia. You couldn't pick a more unusual place for a fashion parade, Western Australia's Gibson Desert. But then you couldn't pick a more unusual product, emu leather. Fashion designer Anne Dresk-Somoff. I would class it into the um, um, ostrich, crocodile, lizards, snakes and really exotic leather. To these people, the fashion parade is proof that almost anything's possible. After all, the professionals said it couldn't be done. Steve Birkbeck, manager of what has been over the last three years, a salvage operation. Are you surprised at what you've seen? Shocked, <laughs> shocked. You know, that stuff, it is stunning. And we didn't expect that we could produce that quality. That's a long way from a garbage bin eight months ago. Now meet Steve's employers. Stuck in a desert with no opportunities, these elders of the Nanganawili tribe had good reason to make the farm work. We want it. We can't close it. No. We want it. Right. There's no work anywhere around the station. We don't want to be short. Did you know that emu leather could look that good? Yeah. You did? Yeah, pretty good. Did you, did you expect it to look so good? Yeah. You did? <laughs> I'm happy for that though. Everybody was happy. It's been a risk. What the Nanganwili community are doing here is pioneering a totally new farming concept. We've taken a wild species and we're trying to domesticate it. In 1976, the federal government tried an experiment. They set up an emu farm here on the Gibson Desert near Waluna in the middle of Western Australia. And so the scientists arrived, but seven years and a million dollars later, they knew a lot about the emu, but very little about the marketing. And so in 1983, the federal government had another look and saw they were pouring good money after bad, and at that stage decided the experiment had failed. The, the federal government had just canned the bloody bureaucrats and said, look, you know, you're wasting money, let's get rid of you and hand all your projects over to, uh, you know, this, this desert people that um, really um, had Buckley's of getting it off the ground unless they got some good heavy backing, which they never had. You wanted to keep the farm going, yes, isn't it? that's what we said. Yeah. It's not worth closing. And did you have discussions about it? Yeah, we wanted. And we're looking around for white fellas, then. Yeah. <coughs> to get it. You were looking around for a white fellas? Yeah. Around yeah. the, uh, the plate, you know. <coughs> And so the community set about breeding up the emu numbers. What do you think they think they've got? A future for their children. But the young fellows are going to head off, aren't they? They'll go down to Perth? Oh, you can go down to Perth. They're still going to be back here. And that's why you want the farm, do you? Yeah. So that they, they, they yeah, always come yeah, home? Yeah, keep that farm going. A lot of that is their tribal ways. <laughs> so the young bloke takes off. He doesn't know what, what these people do here, see? And this young bloke, they've got to grow up through it. Right, so besides the farm being an economically successful, potentially successful venture, it also holds the community together. That's right, yeah. How does this community handle all the classic social issues, like, for instance, alcohol? All heavy spirits and wines are forbidden in this community. And if any are brought in on grog runs, then there's tribal punishment. What the people here call hooking is um, spearing the thigh. A spear is pushed into the thigh and pushed right through. Until now, John, Bob and Lance had only carved emu eggs for spare cash. It's as thin as a cigarette paper. Now they have unlimited eggs, and if they make the farm work, an unlimited future. What would you be doing if you didn't have your egg carving? Sitting on social. Sitting on social service. That would mean that you're one of the few communities in Australia that isn't reliant on social security benefits. Well, 
I've been to a few towns, and this is the only one I've been to that you can't get social security. Nobody's on social service here. It really is farming with a difference. Old man Emu takes fatherhood seriously. He'll sit on this nest for eight weeks without food and without water to hatch his young. So what about the conservation dilemma? The very obvious way in which the birds on our national emblem are being exploited. Well, curiously, in Western Australia, it's been scarcely an issue. And the boys out here on the edge of the Gibson Desert say, nor should it be. After all, it's one of the few industries which in the middle of nowhere is showing a lot of promise. We're taking a bird that has been classified in this country as vermin. And we're taking that bird and we're making something productive from it. We're creating a farming industry. He's ragging out here. That's where we've been sitting there, see? Oh, yeah. It's animal husbandry, Nanganawilly style. Today, Jackie, Left Hand and Paul are checking to see if the emus have mated after yesterday's rain. You see, they are black trackers. There's two tracks. They came along here. Mm. And, they were, and that's where they mated. Yeah. And there. Yeah, mm. that's yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how they mated, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Put on. And he hasn't started laying yet. Ah, uh, yeah. The traditional Aboriginal person has obviously got different values. They're from a different culture. But they still have very much, probably more so than our own, own culture, cater for their children. It seems to me to be a quantum leap getting to this stage if, as you say, these people came out of the desert 30 years ago. It's a huge leap. But what is satisfying about it it's a leap that's been covered and they haven't fallen over when they've landed. They're still standing and they're standing proud. So four years after the government wrote the farm off, a fashion parade, the ultimate test of quality. If the garments are good, the farm should succeed. I had a lot of interest shown in Perth. But do you see the market as domestic or overseas? Um, I think probably more so overseas, because overseas people tend to be um, appreciative of this kind of material. And how much would this sell for? What could the cost at about $2,000 to $3,000. And how do you feel as one of the members of this community about that? I feel proud of it. Every man works for his own tucker. 